I've visited Japan a number of times now, and if you take the Shinkansen Nozomi, the bullet train, west from Tokyo, after about 25 minutes, you pass by the iconic Mount Fuji on the right-hand side of the train. Climbing Mount Fuji has been on my to-do list for many years, but this year, 2023, I finally got around to doing it. As well as documenting my own experience, this will be a kind of how-to video if you intend to do the trail for yourself. Mount Fuji is an active stratovolcano with a summit elevation of 3,776 metres. It is the second highest volcano in Asia and for scale it's around half the height of Mount Everest. Mount Fuji is located 100 kilometres southwest of Japan's capital city Tokyo and is visible from much of the city making it a Japanese cultural icon. Between July and September each year members of the public are allowed to climb to the summit but for the remainder of the year it is only suitable for professional mountaineers. So if you're thinking of climbing Mount Fuji yourself, probably, like me, you'll be staying in Tokyo. So our adventure is going to get underway from Shinjuku City, central Tokyo today. One of the advantages of me staying in Shinjuku is it's right next to the major transport hub of Shinjuku Station. That means I can take the JR Fuji train directly to Fujisan, the gateway to the mountain. You can of course take any number of the buses that run from Tokyo Central Station out to Mount Fuji. But I found the Fuji Excursion Train the most convenient way to get out to the gateway of Fujisan. To give it its full title, the Fuji Limited Express Excursion Train does six round trips a day to Fujisan Station. It takes about 1.5 hours to get there from Central Tokyo and it costs around 10 US dollars. 1,620 yen each way. Don't worry too much if you don't speak Japanese and you can't read kanji because the announcements and the signage are also given in English. But you must reserve this train and I do recommend you do it quite early on in your trip online because this train sells out very quickly at the height of the tourist season. After an hour and a half, you'll arrive here, Mount Fuji Station or Fujisan Station. This is why you need to leave Tokyo really early because you've still got another hour by bus from Fujisan up the mountain. I arrived at Mount Fuji Station at about 9am and every 20 minutes there's a shuttle bus up to the fifth line station on Mount Fuji. It costs 1,200 yen which is about $8 or £6. It can get very busy in tourist season and again another reason you need to get an early bus. The bus stops a number of times throughout the town and then meanders up the mountain for about another 40 minutes. The place we're heading to is the Fifth Line Mountain Station on the Yoshida Trail. Now, if you're a traditionalist, then you'll walk all the way from the valley floor to the summit of the mountain, but that adds another 20 kilometres to your journey. Nobody does it. Everybody starts their journey at the Fifth Line Station. To give it its proper title, the Mount Fuji Suburu Line Fifth Line Station, it's like a very commercialised Everest base camp for Mount Fuji. An advantage of travelling by coach from Tokyo is the coach will bring you directly here, but then you're beholden on your coach to take you back. So if you have a problem on the mountain, then you're not going to make your trip back. For orientation, let me show you on an air photograph exactly where we are in relation to the mountain before I start showing you around. Okay, so this is the fifth line station, Mount Fuji. It's where the road ends, all the coaches drop off. Very touristy, bit resorty. Some people go no further than this, but this is where the Yoshida Trail starts and where the going starts to get rough. Not for a while yet. We're going to hit the sixth line station and then it's all uphill from there. As you can see, the clag's in, not much view from here. It is quite cool, it's about five to eight degrees centigrade. So it's not a bad uh, day for climbing. So let's get underway then and let's head towards the 6th line station. You really want to get away from the 5th line station as quick as possible. There are public toilets here, shops and a medical centre, but the shops are super expensive. Stock up before you hit the mountain. Okay, the first thing you'll find when you set off on the trail is you'll be accosted for a donation to the conservation fund. The 1,000 yen, it's about five, six quid, um, eight dollars maximum. Uh, it's not compulsory, but you'd be very churlish to turn it down. They're so polite and nice about it. You do a little, get a little guidebook and uh, a little tag, which I'll show you in a second. This is what you get for your 1,000 yen donation. 
the rule book for the mountain, the guidebook, isn't much use to you. It's all in Japanese. But you can kind of decipher the cartoons and work out what they mean. As you leave the fifth line station, you'll pick up the trailhead, and you'll be met by these signs in Japanese and English, giving dire warnings about proceeding any further beyond this point, and tips on mountain safety. I know why they do it. People regularly die on this mountain, usually through stupidity, but sometimes simply lack of preparation. So we're heading now between the fifth line station and the sixth line station. They are sequentially numbered. After about a mile on a mountain road, which is fairly flat, you'll take a sharp right-hand turn, pick up the footpath up towards the sixth line station. Get your Instagram selfies here, because once we push beyond this point, we're going to head into the cloud cover, and the visibility generally is going to be quite poor. I didn't do a stop to uh, do a voice to the camera when we hit the start the climbing route. Uh, two crowd with people taking selfies. Uh, I think I've shown you a still a bit of video from that. So we're about 200 metres into the climbing route now. And uh, yeah, the gradient's picked up a bit. It's not steep by any stretch of the imagination, but we've been flat up till now. And one thing that will catch you in your first two 500 metres of the climbing route is you actually had a bit of altitude now. And okay, give my advanced age, uh, I feel a bit more than youngsters might, but you can feel the altitude when you're breathing. Um, uh, what would have been a brisk walk before at lower altitude requires a bit more heavy breathing, but that's the reason you acclimatise, and that is the reason that um, they don't outlaw it, but bullet climbing, climbing the summit in one day, is deeply frowned upon by the National Park. I've warmed up a bit and um, just keep going, but uh, trust me, it's going to get much, much worse once we clear the sixth line station. Right, we continue. So the fifth line, sixth line uh, prepared track. To the back of me now, you can just about make out the lowlands. The cloud's broken slightly. We're at the base of the cloud base. And you can just about see the lowlands and the lower forest areas. So we're at 2,300 feet. And the only way is up when we hit the sixth line station. So we're walking now, it's the prepared track between the 5th and the 6th line station. It is a bit of a motorway, um, it's surprisingly quiet for a Friday on Mount Fuji. Usually it's packed, certainly on weekends in a start climbing season and school holidays, you'll be six abreast going this uh, track. A lot of day trippers come out to the 5th line station simply to climb to the 6th and walk back again, or get a horse ride or take part in the touristy activities, they don't actually go to the summit. A lot of people going past me now would have gone to the summit uh, yesterday uh, or had arrived this morning and they're heading back now to the fifth line station. So, temperature change. In downtown Tokyo, when I left this morning at 6am, it was 29 degrees, fairly sweltering. At 2,300 metres at fifth, sixth line, we are about 8 degrees. The summit forecast, I don't know because we haven't got there yet, is 0 degrees, just about freezing without wind chill. The lady on the speaker in Japanese is telling you basically to turn back if you're not prepared for the mountain. I'm beginning to feel a bit paranoid. The message is also broadcast in English, aimed at stupid foreigners like me. Weather conditions on the mountain is prone to drastic changes. Bring your gear for rain and cold weather and avoid climbing in a casual clothing. OK, so we've got about an hour now. Should only take me about 35 minutes, but I've stopped to film a few times. This is the sixth line station on the Yoshida Trail. Behind me is the uh, station infrastructure, toilets, an emergency station, rangers and a map board. The trail with the Suburu Trail splits here as well. I've come up the Suburu Trail from the fifth line station because it's the easiest for transport, but I'm now going to pick up the Yoshida uh, route up to the summit. As you can see, if I pan round now to my right, your left, it does get significantly steeper from this point. That's the reason I stripped off. I'm getting a bit sweaty now, Don't, not denying it. It is only about five degrees, but my um, fleece jacket was getting soaked through. I'm not going to lie to you, but from this point onwards, the climb does get fairly hardcore, particularly if you're not fit, like maybe I am not, and also if you're not used to altitude. It is about four hours here to our destination, the Toyokan Mountain Hut. Nowhere near the summit. You're not doing a summit in one day here. Let's talk navigation. This is the only map you need to climb the mountain. You don't need any navigation skills because the public routes are all very clearly marked. Certainly in daylight, you can't go wrong, even in cloud cover. But if you don't have mountain experience, I really recommend you don't try and climb at night with a head torch. 
Also, Google Maps works perfectly here. Being Japan, the whole mountain has 5G cover. You can't even get 5G cover in the whole of London. As you can see, we're now out of the tree line into the cloud cover, and also the going underfoot is volcanic clinker. Okay, I'm going to leave the sixth station now, head up. It is going to get significantly steeper now. The seventh station is our next waypoint. Yeah, they're numerically numbered, so uh, that's unremarkable, isn't it? So the station should take about an hour of climbing. Uh, I might stop the film. Uh, hopefully I will, but uh, as you can see, the clag's closing in now. The visibility has dropped below 100 metres. It might get down to about five, even one metre. Uh, it's getting considerably chillier now, so the jacket might go on. I took it off because I was uh, beginning to sweat, but I've cooled down a bit now. Anyway, so the goal for tonight is the eighth station. Nowhere near the summit. It's about two thirds of the way up. And I'll be staying in my mountain hut up there until about midnight. Now's a good time to have a recap on the air photograph. So we started at the fifth line station at about 10.30, 11 o'clock this morning, hitting the sixth line station about an hour later. So it's my aim now from the sixth station through the seventh station to the eighth station to my mounted hut, Toyo Can, by about 1,700 hours. We're talking about six hours of climbing in one day. From the sixth station to the seventh station, the going is fairly steep, but you're on these pre prepared footpaths that zigzag up the mountain, so you're not going up the full line. It is okay on the foot clinker, but it is a bit repetitive. Okay, I'm not sure whether you can see behind me properly or whether I've angled the camera correctly, but we go about two and uh, three quarter hours now. We're nearly at the seventh station. Um, I've stopped here because the clouds in and out. And you can actually see what my destination, my mountain hut from here, the eighth station. It doesn't look far away at all, but it's about another hour and a half climbing, which is really deceptive. The going is really hard. Well, just an update, uh, we're getting quite close to the seventh line station now, and that's where the mounted hut starts. I can hear a generator from the first mounted hut, about another 15, 20 minutes walking from here. Purpose of the mounted hut, so I'll explain more when I get to my hut, is to give the walkers a rest. You can't do this in a day. Elite athletes maybe, but certainly not the average Joe. Uh, it's called uh, bullet hiking uh, or bullet climbing deeply frowned upon by the park authority because so many people get to the point where we are now are completely done in and then they need rescuing during the night. You need a mounted hut to uh, rest before uh, making your summit attempt. Right, uh, I expect the sense station to be quite crowded so let's go see what we can find. Unfortunately this air photograph side on view of the mountain isn't very clear but what I want to show you is where we are now which is the start of the seventh station and where I'm going to end up by nightfall which is the start of the eighth station at my mountain hut Toyo Cab. Okay so I'm passing through the seventh station now. Uh, I'm glad I've got here, I'm fairly tired now, um, I'm about done in. Uh, I've got about another 20 minutes off now climbing to my mountain hut. Um, we're now in the mountain hut district, so there's a several between the 7th, 8th and 9th station. I'm staying just shy of the 8th station. So this is the start of the 7th station, there's a mountain hut here, there's a guy doing hot food, um, snacks <laughs> for a window. Um, just behind me, what I will show you though, whilst we're here, Typical of Japan, you know, in the uh, UK you get none of this, uh, so we've got mounted toilets. It's free to enter, however, it's uh, 200 yen tip. They say tip, it's not a tip, you know, you must pay it, to be honest with you, but fairly sanitary and fairly convenient. Right, we'll move on. And um, the downside to this part of the trek is on the pre prepared slopes and the motorway. It was fairly easy going. Uh, again, it was quite steep, but on the foot, it was quite easy going. It's fairly horrendous now. Um, it's the lava flows and steep steps, and there's a bit of a scramble between huts. Probably the last thing you need um, when your legs are done in. So I've been going about four hours now, and it's like I've been doing four hours of uh, leg squats. 
Well, I'm going to turn the camera off now because I'm going to need both hands for this scramble. I'll show you uh, on uh, the camera how bad it is. It's a fairly quiet climbing day today. Uh, again, it's the early season in the climbing season. Uh, this is where you start to get traffic jams on weekends and school holidays, and you can wait here 20, 30 minutes for the traffic jam of people to clear. Maybe that's a blessing in disguise. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm fairly tired now. The weather has taken a turn for the worse, slightly. It's got quite chilly now. It's a bit of drizzle with the clouds in. Not really helping matters. So um, onwards and upwards to the eighth station and to my hut, and we'll have a bit of a catch up when we get to the hut. Okay, it's going to be my last update before I turn in for the night. I'm about 150 metres away from Toyakan Mountain Lodge. That's where I'm staying tonight. I'll show you around the Mountain Lodge once I've checked in and all that. The weather has taken a pretty the horrible turf, the worst, it's been chucked down by the rain, I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera. The clouds in. The trouble is, all the way through the seventh station, it's been a proper rock scramble over uh, flowed lava uh, and rocks. Yeah, it's not quite technical rock climbing, but I tell you what, it's three points of contact, and that's not helped by the slippery rocks because of the rain. And also, I'm fairly tired, so I'm not picking my feet up properly. No, I couldn't make the summit, I couldn't bullet climb, because we're just over halfway to the summit now so i'd have to do the same again uh, through the night and um i'm making silly mistakes now with my footing so i wouldn't want to do that at night anyway um i told toy account i'd check in at 1800 it's now 10 to 6 uh 1750 so i'm probably gonna be just about 10 minutes after my forecast time which isn't bad though what i've noticed is i'm, I'm the last person climbing the mountains a bit eerie actually as I went past the last mountain lodge, the Japanese staff came out and took a look at me. I think they were assessing whether I was fit to carry on climbing or not. And they just sort of said hello and let me carry on. Anyway, um, we're nearly there. Um, it's been a right old workout. Uh, I think my Apple Watch itself done 1,500 calories so far. Right, uh, I'll see you in the mountain lodge then. A unique feature of Mount Fuji, the mountain huts, and there were about a dozen in total on the mountain, originally were emergency shelters. But these days, they are lodge houses for mountain climbers. They're fairly expensive, looking at about £150 a night for a sleeping space and a sleeping bag. But an absolute godsend, particularly for me, as I was soaked from the rain and I was exhausted from a day of climbing. So I needed an overnight rest. I booked myself into Toyakan Hut uh, just before the 8th station. And I made my booking about a month before my trip. Do remember that the, the, all the mountain huts can sell out very quickly, sometimes even before the climbing season has opened. So book early if you need to stay in a hut. Toyo Cam was absolutely excellent. And I was the only non-Japanese guest that night, but the staff spoke better English than I spoke Japanese, and we found a way to communicate. But I was certainly well looked after in this hut. Once you're settled in, and in my case, changed out of my wet clothes, you do get a basic evening meal with your stay. It is all Japanese cuisine, but absolutely fine with that. Just make sure your chopstick skills don't let you down. And in the morning, you get a box bento breakfast to take up the mountain with you. After my evening meal, I turned in for the night, and your sleeping arrangements are simply a sleeping bag in a cubicle in a dormitory. Absolutely fine with that. I slept like a log. Checkout time is 0600 hours. However, at 4 o'clock, the Japanese staff came and woke everybody up. The reason for the early Rivali, it turns out that, like myself, most of the guests had decided not to trek during the hours of darkness because of the bad weather and were staying until 0600 hours in the morning. But at 0400 hours, the weather broke and the Japanese staff woke everybody up so we could all see the sunrise of Mount Fuji. I will admit, being woken up that early at first, I wasn't that impressed. But then I realised, being a foreigner amongst all these Japanese guests, I was witnessing a very cultural moment. This is literally where they phrase the land of the rising sun, Japan, Nippon, comes from. And there is a phrase in Japanese for the specific event of watching the sunrise over Mount Fuji. 
and I was part of that. And I'll remember that now, I think, forever. After the sunrise, I was able to enjoy my bento breakfast meal and a uh, green tea. And it looked like, for a moment, it was going to be a beautiful day on day two, climbing up towards the summit. The weather, however, did not last. Well, right, here we are, day two then. After quite a painful night, I uh, didn't sleep well at all. Probably because of the altitude and the tiredness, and we got cramped as well, but more about that when I talk about the hut. So we've got two left out of the hut at 4.30 to watch the sunrise, which I'll show you separately. And now we're going to start the second uh, day. Didn't Decided not to go to the summit uh, during the night. Uh, the rocks were too wet, it was raining, didn't really see the point. It makes much more sense to do it in uh, daylight. Uh, it's 4.45 now, uh, I'm going to get going in the next 15 minutes. About the same distance today as yesterday. Hopefully the climbing will be a bit better after the 8th station. I eventually got underway about 5.30 in the morning and my anticipated time to hit the summit was 1100 hours. And this is quite a tight timing because it takes four and a half hours to get from the summit back to the fifth station. And obviously I've got to get back to Tokyo. I hit the eighth station at about 0600 hours. And then my next goal was Fujisan Mounted Hut, which was on the ninth station and then for the summit. But then of course, the clag closed back in again. Much to my relief though, I found that after the 8th station, there was no more lava flow rock scrambles and we're back on clinker on prepared footpaths. I realised though, once I hit the 9th station, I was seriously running out of time. I needed a summit by 1100 hours, and even then, that was going to literally give me an hour on the summit. And in the end, it turned out to not be even that. So climbing from Fujisan Hut to the 9th station, up to the summit, I literally had to turn around as soon as I got there. And here's where I learned a very serious lesson, which is getting down and off the mountain takes as much effort as getting up it. Particularly when you're under a time constraint, I had to be back at Fujisan Station by 1700 hours. It's now lunchtime, and it's going to take me a full five hours of getting off the mountain. Going down a steep slope hurts as much as going up it. And because of that, and I was in a bad mood by now, I didn't film any further. So sorry about that, you haven't got my descent. But actually, that keeps this video within the half hour point. So you don't really want to see me going down the mountain anyway, do you? I think even though things went a bit wrong towards the end because of lack of time, which kind of affected the video badly in my opinion, I still think the whole experience was worthwhile and certainly worth documenting it for YouTube. The sun rose over Mount Fuji on the second morning amongst a group of Japanese people as the only foreigner there, was an experience I think I will take with me forever now. Anyway, thanks for watching till the end. I will try and make as much travel content as I do history content for my channel, because I know my subscribers like both. Thanks now. Bye.